Ave omnibus quibus spettacula metatron sequentur, ego metatron sum. Welcome back, noble ones. It is great to be here today with you. And I would like to talk about the scutum romanum, the Roman shield. Now, before we start, I would like to mention to you a YouTuber that I really like and that I have subscribed to. Uh, his name is Immersive Gamer 83 He has a gaming channel where he mostly um, focuses on VR experience and Oculus Rift games. He's really good and makes some very interesting commentary. He also has like really interesting games, for example, GTA in VR and also Skyrim in VR. And that's th those are my favorite videos of his, actually. So um, if you do have the time and you're interested in this, please make sure to check his channel. I'll just leave a link in the description below and also somewhere you can click here. And hello, Immersive Gamer. It's always good to watch your videos. Keep up the good work. All right then, let's get to history now. When we talk about Roman history, um, there is one thing that I think is very, very important. And that is the fact that we need to realize how long Roman history was. And often we, we don't think about this, and it's very important that we do. The reason being that when we think of Roman history, we're talking about 12 centuries. So pretty much a thousand and two hundred years. A thousand and 200 years. Now that is a lot of time and a lot of things will have changed. And so even when we start and want to talk about something, for example, such as the Roman, Roman scutum, we do have to understand that it really depends on what um, stage of, the Roman, of Roman history we're talking about. Now when we see a Roman scutum, like this one, which is the most iconographic, I reckon, um, we are really already talking about the Roman Empire. But as you know, Roman history is normally divided into three main um, categories, political, political sections, so to speak. The Kingdom of Rome, the Republic and the Empire. So here we are already in the latter, in the latest one. Now, um, what I would like to do in this video is, of course, talking about the Roman shield and his evolution and his development throughout these three stages. Okay? I think that that will make it a lot easier to remember and to comprehend these changes and all the different kinds of Roman scutum that we had. Now, when I will refer, during this video, when I will refer to these Roman periods, uh, these Romans' eras, I will use the Latin words. The reason for that is that I think it gives us more the atmosphere, and it's also an interesting linguistic um, achievement, something that you could learn, perhaps share with your friends when you talk about Roman history. So, let's learn them. So, when we talk about the Kingdom of Rome, we are talking about the Regnum Romanum. Regnum Romanum. When we talk about the Republic, we're talking about the Libera Respublica Romana. Libera Respublica Romana. And when we talk about the Empire, we are talking about the Imperium Romanum. Imperium Romanum. So, Regnum Romanum, Respublica, Imperium. These are the terms that I will use during this video. Now, starting with the Regnum, we are obviously, if we want to really have a look at the dates, well, we could refer to the traditional date of the foundation of Rome, so 753. 21st of April, 753, if you really want to be specific. And we know that the Regnum continues until 509, which is the, the date of the foundation of the Republic. With the Republic, then, we have 509 until 27. This is all before Christ. So 20, 509 before Christ until 27 before Christ, and that is the, uh, the date, 27 before Christ, is the date of the beginning of the Empire. So the end of the Republic, the beginning of the Empire. The Empire will then continue from 27 before Christ until 476 after Christ, so uh, Anno Domini. So we, we could say that the Western Roman Empire will fall, will finish, in the 5th century. Of course, the Eastern or the Byzantine Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, will continue until 1453, uh, so already 15th century, but that is content for another video. 
Today we will focus on the Western Roman Empire and Republic and Regnum. So when we talk about the Regnum Romanum, we don't really have a lot of information, mostly because pretty much most, the information, most of the informations we have are Republican information, so they were written during the Republic. And for the Republicans, the way they were referring to the Kingdom of Rome, the Regnum, was always very legendary. So we don't have a lot of information about their military uh, warfare strategies and tactics and all that. We have much more information than archaeological discoveries to, for the Republican times and even more for the Empire, uh, Imperial times. But um, So one good way to try to understand what the Roman army would have looked like at the time is to consider the Etruscans, for example, and the Sanite and other um, populations that lived at that time around that area, and also the influence of Greek culture and military warfare tactics. As I have said earlier, it is not easy to understand and have information about the warfare tactics during the Renium. However, we do have some information, for example, about the time of the fifth legendary king of Rome, and I'm talking about Lucius Tarquinius Priscus. For example, in ancient Roman religion, we have the Sali. The Sali were the leaping priests. They were priests of, of Mars. They belonged to ancient the priesthoods of ancient Rome. And they were introduced by King Numa Pompilius. We had basically 12 patrician youths dressed as archaic warriors and embroidered uh, with embroidered tunics, breastplates, some weapons, and also shields. So these shields when, were called Ancilia, or Anchilia if you want to use classical pronunciation. Now these were 12 sacred shields kept in the Temple of Mars. Now, if we, so this shape that we see here could have been the kind of the shape of the shields that they used during the Arrhenium, including um, Tarquinius. Um, however, the other possibility is rounded shield, uh, very similar to um, the Hopelite shields. For example, both could be an, an idea. Now, these shields here, the Ancilia, were made either of um, wood or wicker, and then they would be covered in leather. Moving to the Republican shield, now, during the Republic, the scutum had become um, rectangular and also it was standardised in its measurement. As a matter of fact, we do have accounts of generals rebuking their soldiers for having shields that were too big. So, in, in standard measurement would be 120 centimetres per 75 centimetres and it would be 10 centimetres thick. The shield would be, the, this scutum would probably be of a Celtic, in, it would be Celtic in origin, and it was made of two layers of wood glued together with ox glue, a first layer of linen, and then an external layer of veal leather. The, both the upper and the lower part, or rim, of the uh, shield would be reinforced with iron, and it would have an iron umbo the central part of the shield. It seems like that the word scutum originates from the Latin word sectura, which means to cut, as it was made of layers of wood which were cut. No Roman writer of the time lets us know or talks in any way about decorating or painting the shield, so we don't know much about this. We do have some um, discoveries that show shields with, for example, uh, wolf heads, but we don't really know if that was a specific, just a case, an isolated case, or, the, or if the whole army actually did decorate the shields like it will happen in the imperial times. Roman writers, however, are very specific for the kinds of wood or trees that you could use to produce scutum. We, we know that the kind of, of trees that could be used and cut and, and fell would be vine, poplar, elder, willow and linden. 
We then finally have the Marian reforms. So the whole concept of the army will change dramatically, but the shield will not change for the rest for the rest for the next 250 years. The only thing that will change is that finally we have in the first century before Christ some um, writers telling us about decorating shields. So that's becoming a fact. Vegetius even tells us that uh, the shields had different decorations depending on the cohortes or the segment of the of the unit that they uh, that the legionary belonged to and the legionaries also had the habit of writing their names behind the shield and sometimes even the name of their general and the typical red and yellow decoration begins. So with the empire this iconographic rectangular scutum becomes very popular, um, it's very well organized at, at least for the heavy infantry. However with the equites or the auxiliary forces, the cavalry, the situation was different. They were using the parma equestris which is basically a rounded shield made of ox um, leather. Um, it is true though that even if um, we do imagine, um, although we do know that the um, officers, for example, uh, were riding horses. Not all of them had to use the parma. Some did, some didn't. As a matter of fact, even Caesar, 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 uh, and many other generals preferred, and other officers preferred to use the scutum, the rectangular scutum. But uh, there were two figures that used, uh, between the officers, that used the parma, the round shield, and they were the tribune and the consul, to kind of um, match their Greek look, if you will. Also, while marching, unless in enemy territory, um, the shield would be put inside of a leather, the scutum would be put inside of a leather um, case to protect it from, uh, for example, the rain and, and the snow and whatever kind of weather, and it would be carried on the back. So, as part of this video, I would like to actually start talking more in details about this scutum, the imperial scutum, and, and how it worked and why it was shaped the way it was shaped. But first of all, you will, the first thing, thing to say is that the fact that it's bent like that, because sometimes I get this question, why was it not just a rectangle? Why was it bent? Well, that works as a shock absorber during recoil, okay, from the recoil. So if you have an impact, which you most likely will have against the Roman legionary, this shape will help get rid of some, some of the recoil generated from the impact. So it's a shock absorber. Um, mostly this here, the umbo in Latin, was used obviously to protect the left hand that was holding the shield. Um, and it was the most reinforced part of the shield together with the rim of the shield, which will have metal reinforcements. Now, if you notice these metal reinforcements are present um, throughout the whole um, area of the shield. So you have them up here, but you also have them down here. And the reason for that is because the Romans used to also put the shield on the ground. So the top reinforcement was here to protect from direct hits of axes and blades. They could have splintered the wood in two, for example. So this is here to add extra protection. And the part in the rim, the reinforced metal rim at the bottom of the shield was there so that when you would put it on the ground, it would not be a problem. It would not damage the shield if there was, for example, a rock or a stone. Why would you want to put your shield on the ground? Well, that has to do with the way you hold this. So let's show this very quickly. The first thing to notice is the way you hold it here. So as you can see, it's horizontal, very different from medieval things, so medieval shields. So the system is not really well built so that you can hold it like this, but you will hold it like this. So there, is a few, there are a few ways to do that. First of all, if you are marching you, in, in battle formation, you will hold it like this. So I am holding it, but my arm is completely um, extended, all right? And I get, so that way, part of the weight will be distributed on my shoulder. I'm kind of leaning it on my body. During combat, however, the situation would be different because during combat, this would be my line of defense. So, lifting it 
from this position of extended arm can be very problematic because this would weigh 10 kilos, as I have said. So a good, there are a few techniques for this. The first one would be the idea of using your shoulder. So give it a good swing with your shoulder. As you see, I'm not really using the arm, I'm using the shoulder, I'm giving it a swing. Uh, another way would be to actually bend a little yourself. So if you bend towards the ground, you are protecting yourself. But what would you do if you were charged by, for example, your enemy? Now, to resist the charge and have even a stronger defense, you would just put this one on the ground. And then you would use the weight of your body to have a very firm and strong position. Obviously consider that you have your gladius as well ready to strike, so you would resist the impact of the enemy and counter-attack very quickly with your gladius. Maybe in that case holding this one up and starting to counter-attack. So that is the, that's the way you fight with a Roman shield. That's how you fight like a Roman. Alright then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please thumb up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching, and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. Valete.